last night we were sitting home and uh, a lot of folk hear me talk about these false prophets like Daddy Grace and Father yeah. Divine and right. false prophet Jones, but many people never <laughs> saw them. So I pulled them up on YouTube. My wife came and sat next to me. She said, who's that? I said, oh, this is uh, Daddy Grace organization. Uh -huh. The false prophet that's there now is they call him Sweet Daddy Bailey, like yeah. he weigh about 300 pounds. And all of them, all the bishops that die take on the title Sweet Daddy. And when they pray, they pray to Daddy Grace. Mm. And you can look at them and see it's a spirit. All of them just jump, do the same thing. Mm. She said, Gino, that's scary. Scary. Then they had an old 1962 or 63 interview clip of a false prophet, Prophet Jones, who was known for his long white mink coat and wink hat, mink hat, chains and bracelets all over and big diamonds and sapphires on every finger, nails all manicured and pointy like a sissy with an old outdated toupee on. Man interviewed him and say all of these things. He said, how did you get them? He said, well, because when I serve the people, they're so grateful. They go out and buy me these things as gifts. Gifts. I wish somebody would buy me a diamond ring. I give it back to you. People, people ask me, Pastor Dennis, I noticed you don't wear rings. Uh, uh, what's your wife say? I said, she don't say nothing because she don't wear nothing either. I don't need, I didn't need to buy her a ring. Amen. And then my mortgage money go to it. <laughs> I'm her ring. Amen. And she's my ring. Amen. So you find the preachers today, they are ripoffs. I want to take my time and soak you real good, viewers. Look at the church you're in. Look at the religious ripoff. In the West, back in the years ago, in the 1800s, they called them carpetbaggers. They come in an old Western town and rip you off. And if you look at these fellas, they all got the same thing. Years ago, the so-called apostolics didn't do this type of stuff. But even apostolics have fell into it. Many of you young people wasn't living when the so-called Reverend Ike was around. But we that, you know, been around, we, we, we remember old Ike and Coder. <laughs> he looked like Little Richard. Yeah, he used to look like Little Richard. You wouldn't believe where Ike came from. I came from the leadership of Bishop R.C. Lawson, the church of our Lord Jesus Christ of the apostolic faith, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the same organization that Bishop S.C. Johnson came out of. Bishop T.D. Jakes came out of the apostolic church a lot of these men today who no longer believe in the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, now they believe in Trinity. Now the women all on the choir with pants on, looking like a disco junk. And churches have become so weak, so watered down, until it is acceptable in the sight of everybody. And why is so many folk criticizing us? It's because we hold on to that old-fashioned way of holiness. Yeah. There ain't nobody coming in here and try to modernize it either. You come in, we'll run you out. Beautiful. Amen. From pulpit down. No one going to try to slip some stuff. You know, you stick a note and slide it under the door. Ain't no one going to slide no false teaching in here. Every man that tried it, he's not here now. That's right. Beautiful. Amen. 
When I, years ago, when I was training a fella in Alabama, he tried to slip divorce in the church. He ain't here now. Fella down in Mississippi tried to slip no apostles in, no tithing. He got, he slipped right out. Not here now. Only thing that's allowed is clean preaching. And if you can't do that, sit down. That's right. All these thousands of people came out of all type of backgrounds. They didn't come out of junk to be taught junk. We come out of junk so God can clean us up from the junk. That's it. Are you listening? Amen. What the Holy Ghost said. Now I beseech you, brethren. Now I beseech you, brethren. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what? That ye all speak the same thing. When you got the same thing, what is the result? And that there be no divisions among you. No divisions. No divisions. Among you. You have this fella break off, start a church. That fella break off, start a church. That fella break off, start a church. And before you know it, you have three different ideologies. And it keep happening, keep happening, keep happening. It, it will happen until Jesus comes. That's it. And it plunged the people into a state of confusion. People have been watching this program for years and can bear witness. We have not deviated and we have not changed. We preach the same thing today and yesterday, long as, hallelujah, long as God be God. You know, if it ain't broken, it don't need to be fixed. Beautiful. You men have compromised too much, too long. I came from under a preacher. In the beginning stages, he wouldn't compromise. Later on, start compromising. I would knock on his office door. Yeah. Why is it we doing this? Why is it we doing that? The Bible says this. The Bible says that until he got sick of me. He said, that's your problem. You want Bible for something so much. He told me you will never find a church that believe all the Bible. Can you imagine a preacher telling me this? A bishop who claimed he believed the Bible. Apostolics now. Some of them I came up with. See, nothing wrong with same-sex marriages. Some of the bishops are now performing them. Oh, how far gone. Don't you people realize at all that you must stand before God. You're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So what are you getting away with? Nothing. I'm going to perform a wedding of two men. I don't care if both of them was billionaires. And each one offered me $500 million a piece. That alone would be an insult to me. That's true. Because now you would think that my dignity could be bought for a measly $500 million. So I say, well, that's not a measly compared to my dignity. That's like a penny to me. You got to put your Holy Ghost dignity above money. If you're not a whore, you should not be so easily bought. Wonderful. Glory to God. Amen. What did the word of God says here? Now I beseech you, brethren. By now. I beseech, I beseech you, brethren, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and what? that ye all speak the same thing. When you speak the same thing, what's the result? And that there be no divisions among you. I ain't going to have no menace in the truth of God preaching something else that's different from the word of God. That's right. 
a lot of bishops go along with it and tolerate it, as long as the income of that branch church is big. Your soul is more important than your tithing and offering. You got to speak the same thing or get out the pulpit. Speak the same you thing. You have to do it. Not try to do it. No, 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 no. You have to do it. Right. Speak the same this thing. This is a commandment. That's right. Must. Must do it. Speak the same thing so there be no divisions. Among you. That way no temple got a different belief from another That's temple. Right. That's right. When another temple got a different belief and the other temple don't have that belief, then they, what, it creates friction among the members. Yeah. And then they be at odds with one another. That's true. Because the minister is making enemies. He's trying to start a church in a church. Are hey. you right, listen to the old man? Amen. That's why men got to be so sound until if the minister DBE, you ain't so close to him where you are unstable and you are taken over by the deviation. His friendship is not more valued than your close relationship with God. Your close relationship with God is more important than your friendship with a local minister. Or any preacher for that matter. 